Huh? Huh? Today, we are now speaking like the student people. Biggie, oh, biggie, oh. Ah, biggie? Ah, biggie? Ha, 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 ha. Well, don't forget, this is Radio Voice of Niger transmitted on 105.2 MHz and 103.8 cable. Do not forget, eh, we got the award as the best radio programmer, so we know what we are doing. We encourage you to tell us and then join the broadcast also on your stream. You can get us, you can follow it live right now. And in case you want to play this through this particular broadcast on demand or the one we had with the ambassador of Uganda, you can always play it on demand on www.sato.nl. Click on Razzo and on demand. And then from um, 8 30 to 9 o'clock, you will get the one of the Ugandan ambassador. And then this particular one starts from 9 or 9 15. As you know. We have to discuss or continue our discussion on taboo. As we know, taboos are like invisible prison cells. Where people or individuals sometimes get locked up by their belief system which govern their lives and habits. In today's world, so much has changed and is still changing that some of these beliefs have been called into question. Why should people or individuals be held bound by a case belief system and practices. Culture basically means the way people behave, dress or speak, but also how their habits, custom and moral experience influences them. In this broadcast, we will be taking a look at some of these taboos from different cultural and ethnic perspectives. Our guests will be representing and presenting these angles. Voice of Nigeria listeners, we believe you will enjoy this discussion and call on the studio line on 0236-81968 and make your contributions. My guest this morning that is going to talk from the Korean perspective is no other person but our own Veronica Van de Kamp, Mrs. The CEO of GAM Television, I popularly call her Auntie Vero, and we know her as Auntie Vero, those who are popular viewers of GAM Television. Can you say hello to us? Hello, listeners of Voice of Night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you are preparing the, 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 the Kente, Kente mm-hmm. Festival is coming up soon? Oh, yes, very soon on the 3rd of September. Huh. We are really busy. Really? Yeah. You know the one, the last one I enjoyed it so much. Thank you. Huh, yeah. This year it's gonna it's be something be different. Because we are celebrating Africans in the diaspora. Mm. So all about Africa. Oh wonderful, 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 wonderful. So uh, uh Auntie Vero will be speaking uh, representing the Ghanaian side, even though he, she is wonderfully married. Uh, with a Dutchman. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and we also have our own friend who is becoming a regular uh, 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 person here with the voice of Niger, Reverend Dorita Neslo. Can you please say hello to our listeners? Hello listeners. Still, <laughs> still listening to us because of this really interested to know that you are there too and really react in, uh, in our discussion. Uh, Reverend Nefla is a minister of the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a, as a matter of fact, you know, I'm going to have one of the media and the first one, I beg your pardon, a Reverend Minister and then the second, a media. So she's my colleague in the honor position. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We've been in this field for years, yeah. so I'm telling you. Yeah. Ah, before we began to see so many younger oh, yeah. women now, we've been yeah. here for years. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've known it almost for 15 years now. Yeah. Still in the faith, yeah. preaching the gospel, Hallelujah. looking cute and younger. Hallelujah. Wow, <laughs> that is good. Amen. So she will be representing the Suriname culture. And uh, unfortunately, the other one, the man, the only man among these women, Eh, this lively woman, the only man, I think she has, he, he, he's still on his way. I, I, I hope he didn't shy away because maybe, you know, when you, when you are 
in the midst of women, you've got to be a little bit more careful. More especially when you are in the midst of women who have something upset. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, he's supposed to be here to represent the Syrianian uh, uh, country, the Syrian country, and he is here to tell us the taboos. But we will continue anyway. Yeah. Welcome once again to Voice of Niger. Now, first question to uh, the CEO of GAM Television, Mrs. Veronica Van de Kamp. Tell us some of the uh, taboos you've noticed in your own country. I know you've lived here for a long time, but we are talking about Canada. Are there some taboos that you think they are still holding off behind? Yeah, that needs to be dealt with. Yeah, because we are talking about Ghana. It's Ghana that we brought here. We were born and raised there, and now we are here, but we still carry this taboo along with us here. And it's really having an effect, especially on our kids who are the youth. Talking about sex is the most, yeah, something that parents see that it's a taboo. No parent wants to talk to his kids about sex. The kids get scared opening up to us and they rather fall on friends and things. And because of that, STIs are really increasing in the youth. So I think sex is something that is really high, a taboo that we are never, we don't want to let go of in our community. So talking about it, is it as well as practicing it? So what is the taboo there? Yeah, because they don't even want to talk about it. So they don't even know if the kids are practicing it or not. Because it's like they don't even want to know. It's always until it comes to the West. They get pregnant, they get pregnancy, they get um, chlamydia, they get... Oh, and more, even when they get it, they don't even... Because I even had a talk show with the youth about two weeks ago. Yeah. And I asked them, okay, in case, I mean, after 18, when you go and check these things, and maybe you have chlamydia, I'm going to talk to your parents about it. I had 20 youth and nobody even said, I will. Wow. They said, we'll keep it to ourselves. Because we are scared of the way they will react. We are just the migrant kids. Migrant. I have made even Aniers. I have renounced. I have from the yes. Islamic yes. background. Yes. Nobody said I will talk to my parents about it. What can we do to just let talking about sex with our kids become so free? We should let go about this taboo. We know when we're going and back home, you dare not. Even if you just talk about it when you have your menstruation. Yeah. Even to approach, I mean, there are some things that we just have to let go. Exactly. It doesn't help. It's not about, it's not the same. It's but we are just stuck to it. I mean, talking about it is not us doing it because you can take time to educate explain, a child, yes. uh, explain to a child what uh, this whole concept of sex is all about, yes. and that doesn't mean that you are doing the act. <coughs> no, you are. Because if we would open up our mindset and mm -hmm. uh, talk about it, we don't see it as something so hidden and so. I mean, it's sacred anyway, but it should not uh, come to the level of uh, we not being open to talk about it. Yes. Do you understand me? So there's no communication about sex between parents and the youth in the Ghanaian community. What do you have to say, Reverend uh, uh, Nestle? It's very bad. Is that the same way in Surina? <coughs> in Surina, or not. You talk about it. But uh, there is an old generation. I think the, the one that are between the 80 years, the, uh, the old people from the 80 years now, uh, to maybe the 100 year, those generation uh, age the couldn't talk also about it. Mm -hmm. And when they talk, they talk very short. Okay. They give an explanation very short. But the one under the 60 years, yeah. uh, they, are uh, they are open. But not so much open, <coughs> it depends on. Because you have a background where people are educated and you have, you have those that are not educated. Yeah. The ones that are educated are more boldly to talk with their children. But the ones that are not educated, they, they, they are so ashamed to talk about it. And it is like even the, the teacher in the, uh, on the school is taking that responsibility to the, 
yeah. in Suriname yeah. to explain it to the youth. Mm -hmm. But it is a very bad thing because it is a mindset yeah. that needs to be renewed in our community. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We have to be renewed. Yes. So renew our mind. So the modern woman yeah. has a lot to do. Of course. And the modern parents have a lot to do. Of course. Because yeah. we don't need to remain in that same old no, age. No, 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 no. We have to develop ourselves and make something better out of it so that you can, you know, it's like uh, there are filthiness in the area, yeah. but we have to do our best to, to remove it. Yeah. It will take some time, but remove it and no. And begin somewhere. I think by having this media, yeah. Prof, uh, Apostle, yeah. it is a beginning yes. to removing the filthiness. Yes, exactly. Because by our boatless, you see, yeah. we, we are helping somebody today. Exactly, we are Amen. helping somebody out there. Amen. My God. Amen. Well, those of you outside and you are listening to us, don't forget this is Radio Voice of Niger, transmitting on 105.2 MHz ETA. Call us now if you have objections, and call us now also if you have a contribution to make. Right. Uh, what other uh, taboos have you observed uh, from the Ghana community? Yeah. Well, there is this one very sensitive one <laughs> that I don't know if the pastor would like to talk about it, but mm. we really need to talk about it. Yes. There are this thing in the community now about married couples still having contact with their ex. ex their yeah, mm. ex. What do After you mean? 20 years of department, I mean, lots of people just travel because of, you know, yeah, I just want to come to Cairo. Maybe the person is in a relationship yeah. that was not dissolved yeah. and he travel. He's married, he has a kid, and then maybe he goes on a holiday after 10, 15 years and have contact with some ex that the uh, issues were not resolved. Is it ex man or ex woman you are talking about? Both. Both. Nobody dares to talk about this. 